Today we're talking about good password habits, and I'll be referring to a guide written by the Freedom of the Press Foundation, the organization where Snowden is the president. This is part of my series inspired by Snowden's work to give you tools to live a modern privacy conscious lifestyle. Recently in San Francisco, I visited a pop-up privacy exhibit that was terrifying to say the least. The point of the exhibit was to take largely abstract privacy concerns and provide actual demonstrations of how they affect people in real life. One part of the exhibition was this collection of books. You remember that LinkedIn password hack from a few years ago that exposed 167 million account credentials? Well, they printed out all the leaked passwords and printed them in these books. You could search through the books and find your password written there in plain text. That was kind of a daunting experience, but it brings us back to the reality that data breaches happen all the time. Passwords and sensitive account details are exposed, and this stuff is all easily accessible. But a huge danger of a data breach is that people so often reuse passwords. That's the easiest way for hackers to access your accounts. They find a site whose data has been leaked, and then they try using the same password on a bunch of other websites. In fact, the LinkedIn hack turned out to be even worse than it first appeared. Data stolen there has been repurposed and resold by criminals ever since. And attackers still have success exploiting the data to this day, since so many people reuse the same passwords across numerous accounts for years. But having a different password for a hundred different website logins seems absolutely ludicrous. How is anyone supposed to remember all of those? Well, what people sometimes do is have the same password, but they just modify it slightly for each website. This is also a very bad privacy habit because it doesn't take someone much to brute force your password if they already know 95% of it. But there is a more elegant solution, password managers. These are services that generate or help you generate long, random passwords, they store them for you, and you just have to remember one password or passphrase to access them all. But password managers scare a lot of people because the idea of putting all your passwords in one place seems crazy. What if that place was hacked? But the current alternative most people choose is worse. Your passwords are only as secure as the sites to which you entrust them. And if any one of those websites gets breached, Every single place you've used that password or variant thereof is now in danger. That is not a good system. To limit the potential fallout, you should always use a unique password everywhere. And a password manager is the best way to get this done. And password breaches are actually becoming more frequent. It's time to up your password game. Password managers are actually a really cool tool. So let's talk about how to find a good one. For tips on what constitutes a good password, feel free to skip ahead. To start with, you want to decide whether you want your passwords stored locally or in the cloud, meaning you can either keep all of your passwords on a laptop or a storage device at home, or remotely on a company's servers. There are pros and cons to each. If you choose to just store your passwords on your own device and not upload to the cloud, it's super secure. But it also means that that device is the only one that has access to it. So you won't be able to access your accounts from other computers or your phone. For some people who want absolute security, this might be worth it because they don't like the idea of uploading all their passwords to the cloud, no matter what promises a company makes. This will come down to your individual preference. And for some, having your password vault in the cloud might be better. This means that your passwords get synced across all devices. If you choose a password manager that makes remote vault backups, make sure they are end-to-end -end encrypted. This means that no one but you has access to the master password for the vault, and the management company couldn't read your passwords even if they wanted to. Strong encryption is super important here, as is making sure that encryption and decryption happens at the local level and your master key is never sent to the password manager's servers. It sounds complicated, but their website should tell you if this is the case. By default, LastPass, OnePassword, and Dashlane store your password vault on their servers, which also means that if your computer crashes, you won't lose your vault. 
and some companies also allow you to disable this sync feature or copy your vault manually onto specific devices. And your password manager should also not allow third parties to access your passwords without your permission and should require your master password before unlocking the password for any particular website. Next, the password manager should be able to generate long, unique passwords, allow us to use random characters and customize the length. Again, I'll talk about good password techniques later on. Another important thing to consider is whether the password manager is being actively developed. I mentioned in my last video how important updates are for making sure that you keep up with the latest security patches. Software is super buggy and hackers are constantly finding new vulnerabilities to exploit. So you want a password manager that has an active team that is releasing regular software updates to keep up with this. The final thing to look for in a good password manager is whether it has undergone an independent security audit. This is a really important one, which means that security researchers have looked closely at the code and publish their findings about its safety. It's all well and good for a company to say that oh, they're the best, but unless security experts have examined this claim, they're just words. And the Freedom of the Press Foundation says that a security audit is best if it's been done in the last year or two. The final two features I'm gonna mention about a good password manager. The first is whether the password manager supports web browser extensions. These are a great defense against phishing attacks because passwords will only be filled in the correct web page and not imposter pages. And the second thing I wanna mention is the master key should not be accessible from an unfamiliar device, only from your known devices. That's a lot of information about password managers to take in, but luckily the Future of Freedom Foundation has provided three recommendations on their website of services that fit their criteria. If you'd like to read their report, I've included it in the description below. Now let's look at what makes a good password. With a password manager, they will generate a random long password for you, but you still need to choose a master password that is really difficult to crack to protect your password vault. Keep in mind that if you lose your major password, you will lose all of your passwords. What are the best techniques for choosing a password? Security experts like Mark Burnett, author of Perfect Passwords, says that a longer password is usually better than a more random password, and it should be at least 12 to 15 characters long. But the longer, the better. It's for this reason that some people actually choose passphrases instead of passwords, because it's easier to remember a long phrase than a string of random digits. But don't choose a common saying, like your favorite Star Wars quote. You'd be surprised how often things like that are used. The more common a password is, the less secure it will be. So go with someone that no one else would, ideally a random string of words. Another password tip, don't leave digits or symbols as an afterthought and add them to the end of your password. Most people put capital letters at the beginning and digits and symbols at the end. If you do that, you get very little benefit from adding these special characters because your password is a lot easier to crack. And final tip, those security questions that you get are absolutely terrible security holes. It usually takes a cursory glance at the internet to find someone's pet's name or mother's name. Do not use these, they will significantly weaken your privacy but some websites require them. So what you can do is create a random string of words as your answer and also store these in your password vault too. This was a quick look at password hygiene. If you have any privacy concerns or privacy tips, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you'd like more privacy focused videos, then please subscribe to the channel. If you found this video helpful, I would love you to share it around. Thank you so much for watching. And as they say, dance like no one is watching and encrypt like everyone is.